So first of all, I would like to thank all keynote speakers and the invited speakers. Thank you for giving us excellent speeches on artificial intelligence and the cognitive architecture. Then let's start our panel about the future of AI. Uh, as the time is limited, uh, I will just move on to the question time. So does anybody have any questions? for those professors. Here we have the professors, Alex Sonsevich, founding pre president of Baika Society, and uh, pre president Ricardo Gunin from State University of Campinas, Brazil, and uh, professor Olivia jo George, Head of Computer Science Studies at Lyon Catholic University, and Professor Angelo Kangerosi, the Professor of Machine Learning and Robotics at University of Manchester. So here we have those professors. Does anybody have any questions for those? I thought you have questions. <laughs> okay, I can have questions. I leave time for them first, and then I can have questions. Okay, okay, I start. So, um, professors, would you like to talk about the key technologies of the future of AI? Okay. Okay, so Andrew, please. Yeah. we discussed this earlier. We are going to talk about LLMs, unfortunately. Yeah, you can talk about so it. So, I would like to start with something controversial. It's not my, I heard this, it's not my own idea. So, I think LLM is not a language model in the sense, of course, it's, it's trained on text, it comes from language, but the mechanism, it's almost like a summarization of knowledge or semantic similarities, like LS, LSA, what latent, latent semantic analysis. We had latent semantic analysis, which was based on the idea of co-occurrence of words, which would give semantic kind of information. So this is just an upgraded version very powerful for many practical tasks, but is it language? Maybe not. Uh, this is just my point of view, also to extend the discussion. So, do you think LLM should be the future of AI? No. Well, LLM will impact the future of AI, like other technology. It will not be the future of AI. It will, be, it will have high impact, and, uh, and of course, of course, hopefully, we will have more methods, including what we discussed today, integration with cognitive architectures, symbolic representation, other aspects of neural networks. So, but the, as they are at the moment, they are latent semantic analysis methods, very powerful. Besides that, I think LLM can be used in your robots. And uh, we know uh, you do a very good work in robotics. And do you think, uh, have you thought about any ethical issues about a company robots? No, no, we work extensively on ethics. So all our experiments must go through ethics. Uh, so, and now there is an approach which must, we must all follow in the UK and European Union. I'm sure it's uh, global, which is responsible research innovation. So whenever we plan a bit of research, we need to make sure the stakeholders the people that we use the robots, we work with all the people that they are involved in deciding what is the robot there for, which task the robot should they do. So definitely ethics is very important. And of course, because the developments in AI, also in robotics and deep learning, LLM, are affecting society. And there is a bit of a concern in society. We need to be even more aware of this and send a message. I think it was one of the talks this morning. I don't remember who presented this. So definitely, yes, we are working on this. Maybe we need to be even more explicit when we communicate this to, let's say, to the journalists that then represent this to the public. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. Any questions? Paul. Paul. Uh, no, I wouldn't worry for the moment, not the robot. Like, we don't ask a PC or laptop if it wants to run a program on it, so that for me the robot is just a series of connected PCs. 
the robot used for people becomes, from the people's perception, a tool which, to which you can uh, project your own uh, internal states, but the robot itself not for the moment. So the robot is more like a laptop and yeah, less yeah. like a human? Robot is more like a laptop, a second part, sorry? The ro you're saying that a, a robot current. is more like a laptop yeah. and less like a human? Yeah, currently, yes. But when a robot becomes more like a human and less like a laptop? Uh, I won't be here, <laughs> so I don't have to worry. <laughs> it w meaning, it will take a while. Thank you. Hi, um, I think, um, I have an opinion actually. I think that spiking neural networks are having more future than LLMs. LLMs are current day already, commercial already. So they are there. They, if you take into account S curve, they will fall down. But spiking neural networks, even in this conference, we can see the rise of interest and yesterday we had a lot of talks about spiking neural networks, spiking neural networks, spiking neural networks, and so on. That is the future. And we talked, uh, Ricardo, with you, that they actually I, take I, I in account just, time. They, they are supposed to do discussion answers here and questions there. So you ask okay. a question. The question is, what do you think about spiking neural networks? Uh, so I work with spiking neurons for my models. I have a version in previously done with uh, Steve Ferber in my university using Spinnaker and spiking networks. We struggle a lot to make them do, make them learn and do useful things. Uh, I'm still interested in the brain, and we have a new project starting actually first of November, European project called Primi, which uses Spinnaker 2.0, the new version of Spinnaker, spiking networks. I have an advert at the moment with two posts. We do interviews on Tuesday, so definitely there is an interest, but we need the experts in the field, I'm not an expert in spiking networks, to make them work in terms of effective learning, hopefully. And I look forward to, use them, to using them. I have a speech tomorrow at five. Any questions? No. We, we can make questions or, or just... Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, questions. yes, yes, okay. you can. I, I have a question that... Uh, okay, I have a, a diagnosis that we as a community in, in, in artificial intelligence, we still are lacking a better understanding of exactly this word, understanding. I believe that we don't really uh, have a good comprehension of what is understanding. For example, when people look to LLMs, they say, oh, the system understands. I, I, I don't agree with that. I, I believe that they are able to process, they are able to give answers, they are able to do many different things. But I don't believe that LLMs really understand the world. And, and I believe that even us as a community, we still need to, ha to have a deeper uh, uh, comprehension of what it is. So my question to all of you is, what is your particular opinion of what is understanding for you? Well, maybe I should start. This is a really important question. What criteria and what measures do we need? I believe there is no simple answer. And it is a task which is as hard as creation of the artificial intelligence itself, which means Probably it will be also solved by neural networks, which need to be trained to recognize and distinguish between understanding and not understanding. Right now, if you look at the dictionary, what is understanding, you can find the definition like, if you can say the same idea in different words, that means you understand. But that a Google Translate can do, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I'm not going to answer your question, which is a very good question. <laughs> but I think, f for me, uh, since we have a lot of young, uh, bright students here, I think that so it goes beyond the question of understanding. In fact, we don't even have an, operator, an operational definition of what intelligence is. And uh, uh, maybe for the young generation, it will be the, the, their whole w work and their, their whole contribution will be just to arrive to a consensus on what intelligence is, what understanding is, and that may take 
10, 20 years, I don't know. And that is, in fact, to, to have a precise explanation and framing of the problem what, what building an artificial intelligence consists of. We don't even, we are not even able to frame this problem precisely. And uh, in France, we say that if a problem is well framed and when well formulated, it is half solved. Uh, but we have not even well framed and well formulated the problem of what does it entail to create an artificial intelligence. So we have not even half solved the problem. Uh, so it may take 10 years or 20 years to frame this problem properly, and then we will be only halfway <laughs> before solving it, maybe, if you allow me this uh, shameful uh, error of logics. <laughs> maybe I, I add a little bit to this discussion, because it, it's true that the word intelligence is being discussed since a long time, and since uh, this discussion started, it improved a lot, even though we don't have a final uh, uh, agreement of, of, for the meaning of what is intelligence. I believe that we have advanced in, in, in different contributions and different proposals, and at, at least for me, uh, I have my, my, my favorite uh, uh, definition for intelligence that could be different from, from you, but at least I have options. And I believe that the discussion on understanding is something that neither started. And, and, and I believe that this is urgent to, to start this discussion and, and, and let people think about that and, and, and maybe elaborate a little bit. And, and then we can actually have options to try to uh, uh, go for one side or, or other side. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's time. time. Yeah. We can. can we? Sorry. Can uh, we? How, how much time do we have? I think we have no time. Zero. Sorry. Zero. Okay, then. We can we can leave this question and we can talk with it and discuss it thoroughly later. So thank you for your answers. I believe more and more people would contribute to this community, and we can make exciting progress. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for your. Thank you. Oh, yes.